This week on Outdoor Bound TV. We make our way to famous Green Bay, Wisconsin for the annual Walleye and Whitefish Weekend held each year at Dale Strohschein Sand Bay Beach Resort in Door County. Anglers from all over the Midwest descend upon these frozen waters to try to catch the walleye of a lifetime through the ice. We also move to the deeper water of the bay to try our hand at jigging for whitefish. Take a look at this. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Real Deal G2 Seeds, Brew Pub Pizza, Meyer Recreational Buildings, and Colby Chrysler Center. Two seeds. The results speak for themselves. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lata Matza Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lots of Matza Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. Since 1957, Meyer Buildings has offered full design and project management for your farm, equestrian, commercial, and storage building needs. Our recreational building line specializes in the design and construction of affordable, remote area buildings for the outdoorsman. This is my second Meyer building. I've been satisfied both times. Their design assistance, the quality of the construction, and their attention to detail is perfect. At Meyer Recreational Buildings, we offer custom building solutions for all of your building needs. Log on today for a better way to build. You know, we all expect a lot from our trucks. Whether it's tackling Wisconsin's tough winters, towing that boat to the lake, or getting you to your favorite hunting spot. The Ram 1500, your choice of the 28 mile per gallon Eco Diesel or the legendary Hemi Power, air ride adjustable off road suspension, and optional Ram Box. So make the short drive to Colby Chrysler Center and discover for yourself why so many sportsmen and women have chosen the all new Ram 1500. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. Each year, former professional angler Dale Strohschein and his staff in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, host the annual Outdoor Bound TV Walleye and Whitefish Weekend from the frozen waters of Green Bay. On this week's show, you'll get a chance to tag along as we head out onto the ice for some of those trophy walleyes. And then we try our hand at whitefish through the ice. Let's head to Dale's Sand Bay Beach Resort in historic Door County right now. Well, it's Saturday of the Outdoor Bound TV Walleye and Whitefish Weekend from Sand Bay Beach Resort here in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. We're out on the Bay of Green Bay. Now what I'm using for a setup is just a typical jig and minnow, very much like you'd use for summer fishing. Now when I look at my Markham camera, I can see the bottom is real sandy. And I'm just coming up from the bottom maybe about six inches. What we're doing is just giving it a small hop and a pause and just waiting and waiting. 
and then another hop and a pause. Now, one of the things that Dale always preaches here in Sand Bay is to be consistent when you're fishing walleyes. And what he means by that is when you're just holding your jig still and you do the hop, when you come back for the pause, you wanna start and stop your, your hop at the same point. So in other words, you always want your jig and minnow to come up and then settle right back down. If you're six inches above the bottom or three inches above the bottom, wherever you are, you wanna stop and start at the same place. Now pretty much the rest of the group is all set up. Everybody's spread out here in Sturgeon Bay on the Bay of Green Bay. Hey, my name's Aaron Pribble. I'm a guide at Wacky Walla Guide Service, and I'm from Kewanee, Wisconsin. We got real nice overcast conditions, and walleyes are a nocturnal, low light feeder. So any day that we can go out and have low light conditions, we're gonna extend our bite opportunity by a great percentage. You know, this is a really unique fishery up in Door County here. We're fishing a large flat, and a lot of these big walleyes are gonna be roaming by themselves versus an inland lake where you have real concentrated areas of weeds and structure and things like that. So a lot of these big fish are gonna be moving around in, in small numbers. And uh, we like to encourage a lot of our guys to kind of spread out so you're not competing for a lot of the same fish. And uh, you know, we're gonna have a great opportunity to catch a fish like that uh, when you're not fighting for those same fish. So, and what's really unique about this fishery is we don't have a lot of anglers that target walleyes through the ice with tip ups. We're fishing real gin clear water and uh, they like that real nice rapid jigging presentation. Size of that walleye. Look at that walleye. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice job. job. Nice job. <laughs> oh boy. Kurt, I'll tell you what. Look at the overcast conditions we have, and it's going on eight o'clock, and we're catching big Door County walleyes. The oddball never fails. The oddball jig did it again, didn't it? Oh, wow. What a beautiful that. looking fish. Beautiful fish. It, and you're right. This, uh, you know, it is a real overcast day. We never even saw the sun come up, so. Perfect conditions for big yeah. walleyes here in Sturgeon oh, Bay. Oh gosh, and my knees are just ticking like crazy. <laughs> you go hop in a pause and kaboom, he just nailed yeah, that bait. Congratulations, Aaron, wow. what a you. great Very fish. Nice fish. Wow. Look there at that bait all the way in there. Yep, he nailed it, didn't he? Oh yeah, that's the thing. Perfect fish. Nice wow, what a beauty. Walleye. Awesome job, buddy. Hey, thank you for icing that fish. <laughs> you nice bet, fish. you bet, no worries. Awesome. There you are, Hold sir. Wow. What a great feeling, huh? Beautiful walleye. We're gonna let this big girl get back in the water and fight and bite another day. Right. And there she goes. Nice. Excellent. Well, that was a great walleye that Aaron put on the ice. You know, that's a unique thing about fishing in Green Bay. You don't get bit a lot, but when you do, it's usually a great fish. We're gonna transition out to a little bit deeper water to go after whitefish. So we'll catch up with you in a little bit deeper water right behind us in just a few minutes. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission, HHA Sports, Burt Coyote's Luminoc, and Titanium Tip Stick. I'm going to be just like my dad, strong like him, smart like him, and now that I have my mission menace, I'm going to be a bow hunter just like he is. This bow is my beginning, my future. This is my mission. Featuring an advanced perimeter weighted dual cam system, the mission menace provides power for the hunt and adjustability to fit any beginner, young or old. Visit missionarchery.com to find an authorized retailer near you. Mission by Matthews. Optimizer by HHA Sports. 
The Optimizer Light Ultra, voted number one single pin adjustable sight for 10 years running. The Optimizer Speed Dial for crossbows, to the yard accuracy with a single reticle. And the Optimizer Horizon, offering unmatched accuracy from both short and long range firearms. All Optimizer sight systems utilize range dial shoot technology. Ask for Optimizer at a dealer near you. Luminoc, the original self-contained lighted knock on the market, patented to accept replaceable lithium batteries and designed to work with all carbon arrow shafts while producing the brightest results during any condition. Easily the most durable illuminated knocks to allow up to 40 hours of continuous use and are packaged and crafted to perfection for hundreds of shots. There's only one true Luminoc. Luminoc by Burt Coyote, made in the USA. The new Beaver Dam Titanium Tip Stick is the first ice rod with a built-in extendable titanium spring bobber, making it the most versatile ice rod ever. Extend the bobber for ultralight panfish jigging or retract it for game fish or when it's time for travel. It even has a built-in rattling handle to attract fish. It took a while to come up with an ice rod worthy of the Beaver Dam name, but when we did, boy, we nailed it. Last season, we received a record number of photos that you shared with us of animals that you harvested and fish that you caught. And we gave away some great prizes just for submitting your photos to the show. Well, this season, the prizes are even bigger and even better. And all you have to do to be eligible to win is email us your photo or share it with us on Facebook or Twitter. Prizes include an assortment of plastic baits from Woodcraft Lures, a Yeti cooler from Petrick Service Station, Fish Taxidermy Services from Mike Liga Taxidermy. A trip for two aboard the Grand Illusion 2 charter boat on Lake Michigan. And this year's grand prize, a four-day, three-night fishing vacation at Sunset Cove Resort on Lake of the Woods, Ontario. And remember, you can't win if you don't submit your photo. Here are this week's Outdoor Bound TV viewer photos. Now, before we left you for the break, we were catching walleyes through the ice at the annual Outdoor Bound TV Walleye and Whitefish Weekend held each year on the frozen waters of Green Bay. It's now midday, so let's head back out onto the ice and pick up some tips and tricks from Dale on how to catch whitefish. Hey Dale, what's going on? Not much. How you doing, Kurt? <laughs> Very good. Good you to see you, sir. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been great. a while. Absolutely. Another well, year. Another year. Another yeah. year back here in Green Bay. I see a lot of the ice shelves, so this area must have been frozen and then opened back up again. Yeah, a lot of this came over, Kurt, from the West Shore. Oh. So none of this was froze. So it froze up on the West Shore first, and then when that wind hit, it blew it all over here. So that's where a lot of this stuff came from. Looks a little bit like you're uh, driving on the moon when you're coming out here. <laughs> <laughs> so you're into some whitefish here. Oh, absolutely. And what we're doing right now is, uh, you know, we've kind of changed our program up a little bit. You know, I really believe that these whitefish get conditioned to what we're doing and you got to keep switching things up. So what we've done now is we've switched our program. We've gone away from the treble hooks. Uh, we've gone away from a vertical presentation to a horizontal presentation, which is a, what we're using here is a uh, jigging shad wrap. And uh, the advantage of this jigging shad wrap, Kurt, is that now these fish are getting hooked up right here. Right in the meat of the snout, right? Yeah, yep. in the cartilage okay. of their nose. Right. And uh, they're typically getting this front or the back on the jigging shad wrap. And our, our uh, percentages of fish that we're hooking up with, that we're putting on the ice, we've gone way up now. Our numbers really? are way up. So when you get bit, more than likely, you're gonna get them on top of the ice. Now, I know in the past, you would have us pound the bottom a lot in here to kind of create that dust storm, if you will, Correct. and then bring it back up. Is that something you're still doing with yeah, the Yeah, that's, that's not changed. Okay. So that, that cadence that we're using, you know, just 
constantly massaging the bottom a little bit, bringing, and remember one thing, you know, and one of the reasons, you know, like today I had a gentleman with us and uh, he said, hey, listen, I'm seeing a lot of fish in the upper water column. And uh, the downside of that is those fish that are running up in the top of the water column, 10, 15 feet up like that, those fish are very inactive. The fish that are aggressively feeding are gonna be those fish that are relating to the bottom. Okay. A lot of what they're feeding on are like gobies, scalpin, stone rollers, different things like that. All of those uh, fish that they're feeding on are tight on the bottom. So whenever you can create a little debris field, if you will, with your jig, you're gonna always draw fish in. The other way that you can draw fish in is by, you know, two, three, four foot lifts up off the bottom, get it way up and mm -hmm. then follow it back down. Because what you're gonna get then is that fish five, six, seven, eight feet away will visually see it and you're gonna get a captive audience that way as well. Okay, now I know in the past, uh, out here where we've fished, there's a lot of zebra mussels and, and so on on the bottom. Explain a little bit about what, what's down here where you're at right now. Well, you know, what we're doing here is there's a ridge. We're sitting on a ridge right now and it runs from Snake Island, which is back to our southeast, and that ridge runs about five or six miles out past Sherwood Point Shoal, and these fish just run this ridge. Okay. If it's sunny out, a lot of times these fish will be out over the deep water off this ridge. The top of this ridge is about 35 feet. The edge of this ridge is 70 to 80 feet. Oh, no kidding. It so is it that gets deep. that deep. Okay. And uh, so if you get overcast days, you know, they can be anywhere, but if it gets really sunny, a lot of times, more than not, they'll push out over that deep water. Okay. You know, they're a very visual fish. You know, they got mm -hmm. big eyes, a lot like a walleye. And uh, so with that in mind, you know, you want to use a fluorocarbon leader. You want to stay with lighter line. Uh, whitefish is one of the few fish that is able to decompress as you're bringing them up. So say we're out over 80 feet, they're actually decompressing as they come up. So if you do get on a good bite, you can use some selective harvesting there. If you want to throw some of those younger fish back, just put them in the hole and they'll swim right back down. No harm, no fault. That's a great point. I appreciate that. All right, well, we'll get set up and get down and see if we can get some of these white All fish right, on the ice. So Sounds thanks good. again, Dale. Yep, appreciate you're welcome. it. Come on, come on. <laughs> he's coming. Oh, he's pulling. He is pulling. Come on, come on. Come on up through there. Come on. Oh. There we go. <laughs> I tell you what, it's really been a tough bite today. We're able to watch these whitefish on the Markham, and what they're doing is they're coming in and they're cruising along these zebra mussel reefs and they, they're taking a look at these digging wraps and then they just kind of slowly swim away. Well, uh, one of the things that Dale suggested was to use some real erratic action and that's exactly what I was doing and this fish just came in off of camera, just came flying in. He pinned that uh, jigging wrap against the bottom. I was able to set the hook. Wow, what a beautiful Door County whitefish. I know you guys are up with Kurt Walbeck, a good friend of mine, and I'm glad you're here. We're gonna talk a little bit about whitefish fishing. One thing about whitefish that I can tell you is, first and foremost, is they're a very spooky fish. You wanna be, you wanna be as quiet as you can. You know, just a shanty door closing and opening, you know, things like that. These things can shut the fish down for 20 minutes, 30 minutes at times. You gotta make constant contact with the bottom. This is the type of jig that we're using. It's called a jigging shad wrap. This is a number three jigging shad wrap. Pounding the bottoms, getting that right cadence going with the jig. You know, basically what we're doing is pounding the bottom like this. Boom, boom, boom. It's just a light lift up and down. And then we're bringing it up about an inch and then just kind of massaging the bottom like this. The key here is follow the jig up and follow it back down. Follow up, follow down, because they will hit on the up or they'll hit on the descent. If you just let it free fall down, you're gonna miss a lot of the bites on the descent. You gotta remember here in Door County on the Bay of Green Bay, this water is gin clear. I mean, you can sit in a shack, put the top over, look down 30 feet and see the bottom all day long. So they're very visual.
Oh, beautiful Door County whitefish. These whitefish are out here feeding on the bottom on these on the gobies and stuff on the bottom. Just thump your jig up and down a few times, and uh, it actually makes a little cloud of, of dust and sand. It kicks up and uh, work that jig up and down a few times above it, and uh, they seem to come right in on it. Hook sets are important. As I grab the rod back here. And what I do then is when I find bottom, I want to find the bottom and working my, my jig with the rod tip facing down towards the water. And the reason that I'm doing that is when I'm working, it gives me a lot more ability to set the hook in comparison to say, working the rod parallel to the ice or to the water like this. And now I've lost another two feet of hook set. Just make sure when you're bringing them in, try to watch them when you're bringing it up. Sometimes there's currents. That line's gonna be off to the side. You gotta remember with these jigging wraps like this, they've got those two big hooks, one in the front, one in the back. A lot of times that fish is gonna be on one or the other. So when you're bringing them up to the hole, you wanna kinda steer them into the hole because if you catch this jig on the side, you're gonna lose the fish then at that point. Oh, another dandy. Another dandy Door County whitefish. I tell you, the bite's been a little bit, little bit finicky this afternoon, but uh, Dale's put us on some fish, and I can't say we haven't had our opportunities. They've been biting really, really, really light, but uh, nonetheless, we've been getting some fish we've been getting are very nice sized fish. I always tell everybody hook sets are free. More than likely, if you think you have a fish, it was a fish. So just set the hook, you know, and because and, you're going to learn then, you know, you, there, it's a change in resistance, remember, more than it is a bite bite. So if you do get that first one that actually bite bites, it may be the last fish you catch all day. All right, we got holes in the shacks, the shacks heated. We've got buckets in the shacks. So if you wanna jump out and we've got holes outside here, if you get a little cold, you can always jump back in the shack and warm up. The one thing you wanna to remember too that's kind of critical, if you're sitting outside, do not let that water build up on the line. That deadens that bite. And what I like to do is just take my thumb and my, four, my pointer finger, take your finger and just just real quick down the line and you can clear all that ice off. So keeping that line is clear here, especially because like I said, it deadens that bite so much right there. All right guys, let's have some fun and catch some fish. All right. Like a plan. Again, you just gotta be persistent. Not one of the biggest white fish we've caught, but you know what, it's still a nice fish. We got a lot of men right now, but we really don't have a lot of current. And when you don't have current with these whitefish, they get really inactive. So it's important to just stay persistent, keep pounding that bottom. And hopefully, you know, you, you got to figure out your cadence too, how you're jigging. There's going to be different ways that you're going to get these fish to bite. So we're going to let this guy go. See you another day. And we're going to jump back in and see if we can catch some more. Folks, if you've never tried white fishing, you owe it to yourself to come up and give this a try. You can contact Dale. His information is on the bottom of the screen. It's just a great, uh, great day to come out here on the Bay of Green Bay and try something new fishing for whitefish. Awesome. It's been a little bit slow, but I think they're starting to come around. And uh, what I'm finding out Got to really throw in some big long lifts in there and pound that bottom real hard. You know, when you don't when you don't have the current again, they're real inactive, so they're really not feeding. So what I'm trying to do by pounding the bottom, where you're going to get what we refer to in the fishing world as a reactionary strike, they're not they're not hitting it because they're actually hungry. They're hitting it just to get it out of their space. And uh, again, 
when I was tapping that bottom, when I lifted it up, what these fish are doing is they're tailing it up. They tail up like this and they're pinning it on the bottom and then they're sucking it up off the bottom. As you see, he's got that, that hook right up, like I said, in the cartilage of his nose, like I was talking about earlier. And that's the advantage of going over to these jigging shad wraps. You very rarely will lose one of these fish. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Shea Creek Sports, Northeast Wisconsin Chapter of SCI, Rue Motors, and Burrs Off. At Shea Creek Sports, your pursuit is our passion. Your pursuit. Your pursuit. Go get it. Your pursuit. Your pursuit. Your pursuit. Your pursuit. Our passion. Shea Creek Sports, conveniently located just north of Medford on Highway 13. Hi everyone, join me in Green Bay this February at the Stadium View Sports Bar for the Northeast Wisconsin Chapter of SEI's Annual Hunter Expo and Banquet. Join us February 26th through the 28th and visit with outfitters, professional hunters, retailers, and lodge owners from around the world at the Wisconsin State Hunting Expo. Then join us Saturday night at Stadium View for the SCI Hunters Banquet featuring great food, gun raffles, and famous live auction. We'll see you at these two great events, February 27th and 28th. Call for your tickets today. Hi, I'm Tim Rue from Rue Motors. Whether work or play, we have the Kubota RTV for you. Rue Motors has been serving central Wisconsin since 1947 with a full line of quality Kubota tractors, mowers, and RTVs. Backed by four generations, you can count on the staff at Rue Motors for outstanding sales and service on all of your quality Kubota products at both convenient locations. Rue Motors, take the short drive up Highway 45 in Burnhamwood or Anigo. Hey everyone, if you've spent any amount of time in the outdoors like I do, chances are you've gotten those burrs stuck in your clothes. Well, I found a great new product to help you easily remove these pesky hitchhikers from your clothing. Introducing Burrs Off, the first and only burr removal tool that works on all types of burrs and all types of clothing. No more pulling burrs off with your fingers. Brush them off in seconds with Burrs Off. I take one with me everywhere I go. Look for Burrs Off at a dealer near you. Product and promotional consideration provided for Outdoor Bound TV by these fine sponsors. Well, that'll about wrap things up here from Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. A big thanks to Dale Strohshine at Wacky Walleye Guide Service and Sand Bay Beach Resort for once again hosting the Outdoor Bound TV Walleye and Whitefish Weekend from the Bay of Green Bay. Hey everyone, join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the Midwest, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. She got it right up to the, right up to the top of the hole and the hook came out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get her holding her, her holding her whitefish up. Yeah. You can do that. You're a hell of a cameraman. I should have been here a few minutes ago. Yeah. I know circuit. where you live, Kurt. <laughs> have Lee take us to commercial break. Hi, I'm Captain Lee Hosh, and we're up here at Sand Bay Resort and Outdoor Bound TV. Ugh.